Welcome to Rob Schmidt tonight. A new ABC Ipsos poll has all the Kamala freaks fired up tonight. Kamala Harris up six points, 52 to 46. That lead, despite Trump dominating Kamala on basically every key issue, up close to 10 points on the economy, inflation, immigration. And while lefties on your Facebook are rejoicing the results of this poll, to most Americans, a poll like this makes absolutely no sense. And that's probably because this poll is ridiculous. And we're going to take you all the way back to 2016 to prove it. And this headline about this same poll two weeks before Donald Trump would beat Hillary Clinton in the election. Clinton vaults to a double-digit lead, boosted by broad disapproval of Donald Trump. This same ABC poll, eight years ago, had Hillary Clinton up 12 points, 50 to 38, two weeks before the election. And then two weeks later, a humiliating loss for Hillary Clinton, a humiliating election result for ABC News and their pollsters, which for some reason is a network that still conducts polls that no intelligent person would ever take seriously much like Kamala Harris as a presidential candidate. Here was Kamala over the weekend and just about as ridiculous as ever. Take a listen. <laughs> Let's just get through the next 64 days. How about <laughs> you better thank a union member for the five day work week. You better thank a union member for sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. It's, it's, it's hard to imagine that is going to win. Let's be honest about it. Again, people are very perceptive. They can spot a fake and they can spot a fool. And you can spot this one from a mile away. A vapid candidate who believes in nothing except consolidating and expanding her own power. But she's doing great in those media polls. But what about the real polls is the question tonight. The internal numbers that we've long known tell the real story of a campaign. What the campaign is seeing on the ground. The best polling in existence. Campaigns never intentionally reveal this information to the public. But this week, their actions speak louder than all of these ridiculous media polls, as Kamala Harris is set to campaign in very blue New Hampshire tomorrow. Tim Walls campaigned in blue Minnesota over the weekend. Doug Emhoff is going to blue Virginia. The Kamala campaign has to pull off a very impressive feat in this election in these swing states. And we know there's about seven swing states. And they have to do some serious work in those states to win this thing. Their path is actually a lot harder than Donald Trump's, their path to victory. So why in early September are they in Minnesota, Virginia, and New Hampshire? Those are, you got to have those. I mean, if, if those are even in question, it's over already. Maybe avoiding all media scrutiny after a career of spineless political flip-flopping is not such a winning ticket after all. And while Kamala continues to run from the cameras every chance she gets and only does 18 minutes with a very friendly CNN host when she does her one solo interview, probably before the election. On the other side, you have Trump everywhere right now, taking questions from anyone, anywhere, hard questions, anything he can get. Here he was today. Let me ask you about Project 2025. So you've publicly said that you don't have any direct connection to Project Nothing. 20. I know nothing about it. And they know that, too. Democrats know that. And I purposely haven't read it because I want to say to you, I, don't, I have no idea what it's all about. Random hour-long podcast. He's everywhere. He's trying to get everyone's votes. Constant scrutiny on him and J.D. Vance. Enough respect for the voting public to present them with a plan. If you vote for me, this is what I want to do. Axios reporting Trump and J.D. Vance have done 94 interviews recently. 94. Vance has not been on the ticket that long and are actively courting adversarial outlets that Republicans often avoid. Democrats call that fascism. <laughs> okay. And with Kamala campaigning in fairly deep blue states, it's clear Americans are not nearly indoctrinated enough to fall for the scheme that this entire apparatus has just tried to pull on you, demanding more than a popularity contest in this next election. After three years watching Joe Biden and Kamala Harris mangle our country, this next election in 2024 won't be a simple popularity contest between the joyful phony 
and the ticked off guy who constantly reminds us that our country is being run by fools. ABC has Trump's favorability at only 33 percent. And yeah, eight years of mainstream media vilification and his attitude at times is going to do that. But we're not voting for the guy you most want to have lunch with tomorrow. Kamala Harris, after eight years of media tongue baths, is only at 46 percent favorability. How is that even possible? With the coverage that she gets, she should be in the 80s without breaking a sweat. And it's because competence matters. And the polls largely don't. Election forecaster Nate Silver's method is far more credible than most media polls, and his updated forecast has Trump with a 57 percent chance of winning in November. Kamala Harris, despite all these great polls that they brag about, is at 43.